Welcome to the most in-depth and beautiful looking Explorer Journeys Dining Guide on YouTube and possibly the whole internet. Dining on Explorer 1 is a pure delight and we're going to cover all the savoury options available and of course the sweet stuff and the beautiful dining venues themselves. Where relevant we'll also be including full menus for you to browse at your leisure. Stick around to the end and we'll be showing you the food in anthology, the 190 euros per head dining experience. You're going to be hungry after this, so let's go. There's a couple of facts I think we should start with. There are a whopping 129 chefs on board and every single restaurant has its own galley. Every restaurant also has its own specific plant-based menu options too. That's pretty impressive, and if you're interested in the culinary philosophy of Explorer Journeys, if you stay till the end, you'll find we have an exclusive interview with Frank Garanga, the head of culinary for the entire gastronomic offering on board every Explorer ship. He's a fascinating, extremely focused and knowledgeable chef, and you'll find his chat with James Cole, founder of Plash Cruises, thoroughly absorbing. OK, let's get on with the guide. Name the Emporium after the Greek word Emporion, a place for merchants to showcase their best produce. The Emporium Marketplace is an all-day dining restaurant offering a range of different cuisines with a focus on quality produce. Open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, there are some pre-prepared hot and cold dishes as well as made-to-order fresh dishes. The largest dining venue on the ship, this restaurant features 18 separate white marble cooking stations which evolve throughout the day. A selection of wines, champagnes and beverages are available to complement meals throughout the day. For breakfast, the Emporium Marketplace has a range of hot and cold options and there is plenty to choose from including a good selection of pastries and breads and all the usual hot breakfast options. We especially love the Juice and Smoothie Bar which offered a variety of healthy concoctions made to order from fresh whole ingredients. A great start to the day. Breakfast is generally available from roughly 7 till 10 a.m. every day. Both lunch and dinner run along similar lines, from fresh sandwiches and delicious pizzas to freshly prepared salads to the hot food stations that change daily. Our highlights were the grill, serving some great burger choices, the wok station where the chef will cook you a flavoursome bowl of something spicy and Asian, to the seafood bar serving fresh oysters and other delicacies. My favourite was the sushi bar, which will serve you endless plates of fresh sashimi, nigiri and sushi with a selection of maki and uramaki to complement. Utterly delicious. The Emporium Marketplace is open for lunch from noon till 2pm and for dinner from 6.30 till 9pm. Even though this is the most informal dining option on board Explorer, it still manages to execute a refined buffet-style dining experience with some lovely secluded seating areas, nice tableware and attentive service. Taking its cues from today's European cafe culture, Crema Cafe has an unpretentious style with comfortable lounge seating set alongside a wall of glass for uninterrupted views of the sea. It opens at 6.30am with the excellent team there making delicious barista coffee as well as delicate pots of tea and snacks from the small food counter. First thing in the morning there are little pastries, sweetbreads, fruits and yogurts available as well as always available and incredibly Moorish cookies and flavoured shards of a chocolate slab. From late morning the offerings on the food counter change to small sandwiches, paninis and cakes to accompany the cookies and chocolate and are available until the cafe closes at 7pm. This lovely light and airy lounge venue at the front of the ship on deck 11 is one of our favourite venues and is the location for the afternoon tea, accompanied by some delicate music from one of the ship's musicians. Taking place every day between 4 and 5 p.m., the tables are laid out with teacups and crockery for a refined tea. As soon as you sit down, you are presented with a choice of teas, which are in bags rather than loose leaf. After a few minutes of brew time, the food trolley is brought around and you can choose from three or four little sandwiches, a warm scone served with cream and jam, and a range of cakes and cookies. All of the food on offer is pleasingly bite-sized with no large wedges of cake or oversized tarts etc. 
You can choose as much as you want from the first visit of the trolley, and thankfully it did reappear again quite quickly, so you can make another selection, which is particularly nice if you want to enjoy your savoury bites first, then move on to the sweet treats. Although we prefer a selection served on traditional afternoon tiered tea cake stands, it's only really an aesthetic thing, as serving the food from a trolley arguably produces less waste, the food was equally as delicious, and was accompanied by a couple of lovely servers whose charm and smiles made the hour even more fun. Located between the Emporium Marketplace and the beautiful Conservatory Pool, this outdoor dining venue area would usually be occupied by a grill-style dining station on most other ships. However, Explorer Journeys have chose to have a creperie here, serving freshly made waffles and crepes from noon until 5pm. In addition to the crepes and waffles, there is also a range of delicious gelatos and sorbets, perfect for a hot day around the pool. <laughs> and I've got to say, the 70% chocolate sorbet was as addictive as it was delightful. Whilst we enjoyed the crepes and waffles, as the only venue open for a late lunch if you've been out on a shore excursion, except for room service, we thought this was criminally underused during our voyage and think this would probably be better utilised offering lunch style options such as pizza, tacos or burgers alongside the sweet counter. Along with the Med Yacht Club, this restaurant offers open seating dining for dinner and is also the a la carte waiter service venue for breakfast. A sophisticated and intimate restaurant, Phil Rouge offers a global tasting tour of French inspired international cuisine. Phil Rouge literally means red thread or common thread in French, and this restaurant aims to offer international flavours with a French influence as the common theme in a classic luxury dining experience. Phil Rouge opens every day for breakfast from about 7am till 9am, offering an a la carte table service menu. Offering the usual range of breakfast choices, we enjoyed beautifully presented fruit and yoghurt dishes accompanied by healthy smoothies, followed up with an omelette and minute steak and the most delicious signature spinach and eggs benedict style dish Helen has ever tasted. And she has a good eye for decent eggs benedict too, made especially delicious with a generous serving of caviar to top it off. Open every evening from 6.30 till 9.30 p.m., Phil Rouge is one of the two open seating restaurants where guests can arrive for dinner without reservation. The refined menu offers a range of traditional fine dining options as well as a daily souffle for dessert. If you don't fancy the souffle, an elegant dessert cart will definitely tempt you with the freshest creation served tableside. We started the evening with roasted beets and lump crab cake starters followed by a classic Caesar salad and risotto with the slow braised beef, short rib and langoustine thermidor for our main dishes. Helen tried the souffle of the day for dessert, while the rest of the table shared pretty much one of every dessert from the dessert trolley, the highlights being the rum baba and the signature dark chocolate mousse. Alongside Phil Rouge, the Med Yacht Club restaurant is the open seating main dining room for dinner and lunch. The restaurant itself is a large, homely venue with oversized portholes offering natural light and lovely sea views. The sumptuous sofas in the bar area at the entrance to the restaurant welcomes guests who enjoy a drink at the bar before or after their dinner. The menus are influenced by sophisticated beachside Mediterranean restaurants, embracing the varied cuisines of this popular European region, infusing tastes and textures of Italy, Spain, Greece, France and North Africa coupled with Mediterranean wines. Alternating a lunch service with Sakura, the Med Yacht Club opens from noon to 1.30pm, offering a selection of tapas and Mediterranean-style dishes with a large range of cuisines to choose from. We started our lunch by sharing a meze platter before moving on to share a bowl of deliciously light and pillowy pesto gnocchi. After that, I went for the roasted chicken served with potatoes and green beans, while Helen had the lamb shank with creamy orzo and feta cheese crumble. To finish off, we shared the Piedmont Hazelnut Semifredo Dessert, a big chocolate ball served on a hazelnut sauce filled with hazelnut ice cream and salted caramel sauce. Oh, it was scrumptious. Open every evening from 6.30 till 9pm, the Med Yacht Club is one of the two open seating restaurants where guests can arrive without reservation. The menu is comprehensive, offering a variety of cuisines to meet even the most particular of palates. 
We started with a range of tapas dishes chosen by our servers to ensure our table of eight started the evening family style. Following on from the tapas, we chose to start with Italian risotto and tortellini. And although we asked for appetizer sized dishes, <laughs> they were both quite large. For our main course, we chose the beef tenderloin and the Moroccan chicken served with couscous. By now we were pretty full, so we shared the signature chocolate dessert. And boy, I'm glad we did. Open from 6.30 till 9pm every evening, Marble & Co Grill requires reservation with at least one visit guaranteed per voyage. This European steakhouse serves exceptional cuts personally sourced and sustainably farmed. Sourced for their flavour and provenance, matured to perfection in the ship's very own in-house dry ager. With so many delicious options to choose from, we went for the beetroot and crab salad starter although we both had a little bit of envy seeing the fingling potato topped with a quinelle of caviar that some of our fellow diners chose. For our main course, we both reverted to our firm steakhouse favourite, a French filet mignon, accompanied by our sauce of choice, truffle mashed potatoes, cream spinach and sautéed sprouts. Here's what else others in our party enjoyed. We always enjoy any Asian restaurant at sea and Sakura was no exception. In fact, it was our favourite dining venue. Named after the national flower of Japan, the cherry blossom, and a symbol of renewal and optimism, Sakura offers a fusion of Japanese, Thai, Vietnamese and Malaysian flavours, all wrapped up in a varied and interesting pan-Asian menu, which you will see shortly. Alternating with the Med Yacht Club restaurant, this restaurant opens for lunch from 12.30 till 2pm, offering a selection of sushi and sashimi accompanied by some light main courses with a special mention for the walk of the day dish. For those that struggle to make a decision, there is the option of having a bento box containing a couple of pieces each of sushi and sashimi, an oriental quinoa salad, a bao bun accompanied by a fruit salad and a jasmine tea creme brulee. Oh, and that delicious 70% chocolate sorbet I raved about earlier is also available here. <laughs> it follows me around, I swear. Open every evening from 6.30 till 9pm, Sakura is one of the two speciality restaurants on board which generally requires a reservation. There are two menus to choose from, either the sushi menu or the comprehensive pan-Asian menu, with the option to mix and match from both menus if you want to. We chose to share the sushi taster platter and the Asian style tapas to start with. With a range of starters to choose from, we opted for the tuna tartar and the wagyu beef tataki. For main course, we chose two beef dishes, slow cooked beef penang and sirloin teriyaki, with the scallops in the middle to share. Although we were both pretty full by now, we tried the two chocolate dishes on offer, though to be honest, they were both a little disappointing and didn't hit the spot like the rest of the meal had. Maybe I should have just asked for that sorbet again. I'll be surprised if you don't find your suite on board as gorgeous as we did, so why not use that lovely outside table and chairs for your own private dining experience? With 24-hour room service, the menu offers a large range of delicious sweet and savoury dishes ranging from full meals to light snacks and sandwiches. We didn't have time to sample this menu, unfortunately. But breakfast is also available in the usual manner with a paper menu left on your bed at night to fill in and leave outside your door for delivery the next morning. We couldn't resist and were delighted that our breakfast order arrived on time, on hot plates and accurately fulfilled. Though the delivery lacked the refinement of some of the other luxury lines who will take time to lay out a tablecloth and arrange the dishes on the table for you, the food was hot and as good as we would have got from the main restaurant. It is worth noting that if you are in a higher category of suite with a proper dining table, you would no doubt have your table laid out for you. 
As well as this, the resident suite guests are also able to order dinner from any of the restaurant's menus during the dinner service hours. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and are interested in booking an Explorer Journeys cruise, our preferred travel partner is Panache Cruises, the elite ocean expedition river and yacht style cruising specialists. The team at Panache has decades of combined knowledge and experience in finding the right luxury cruise for you. Your personal cruise connoisseur will help you with every aspect of your voyage, no question too big, no detail too small. Visit their beautiful website or call one of these numbers and make your next dream cruise, like the one we took on Explorer 1, a reality. Oh, and please, don't forget to mention Visit With Us because we'd be terribly grateful because it helps support this little channel. Thank you so much. In this small and exclusive 48-seat restaurant, almost hidden from view in the upper lobby on Deck 5, guests are invited to experience menus curated by some of the world's most celebrated guest chefs and discover their inspiring creations representing cuisines from around the globe. The idea is simple yet innovative. Invite Michelin-style land-based chefs to create a tasting menu which they come on board and train the anthology chefs to deliver for a set period of time before another chef takes over the menu and the kitchen, meaning that returning guests would have a completely different experience if they dined here upon their return to the ship. The menu we experienced was designed by Swedish-born, two Michelin star executive chef Emma Bengtsson from Aquavit restaurant in New York. The menu was beautifully executed and served, and each course was a celebration of flavour and texture. At the end of the meal, we were treated to Chef Emma's signature dessert, Arctic Bird's Nest, faithfully recreated by the wonderful anthology head chef and her team in the kitchen. Our dining party consisted of some pretty celebrated and revered cruise critics who have sailed collectively on hundreds of cruises over several decades, and we all agreed that was probably the most delicious dessert we have ever experienced on any ship. It was outstanding. If you get a chance to try this restaurant, we would thoroughly recommend it and make sure to make an evening of it, savouring the whole experience from the open kitchen to the detailed explanations of each course and the artistry devoted to each dish. At €180 Euros per person, this has to be the most expensive restaurant at sea. But between the five of us well-cruised diners, we all agreed that this was probably the best meal at sea we have ever eaten. Our only criticism is the additional charge for the wine pairing, which at €75 Euros each is not unacceptable, but we did feel it was rather uncharacteristic of Explorer Journeys that guests had to pay extra for drinks in here, with no included drinks on offer. Maybe that will change. What do you think about the dining on board this exciting new luxury cruise line? Does it compare favourably with its competitors? including such huge established names like Silver Sea, Seabourn and Regent Seven Seas? Let us know what you think in the comments. And as promised, here's a bonus interview with Chef Frank Garanga, Head of Culinary for Explorer Journeys. Take it away, James and Frank. Hi everyone, it's James here. I've got a really special guest with me today, Frank Garanga. Hi Frank. Hello, hello everyone. Frank, today, uh, just wanted to have a little conversation with you about this absolutely fantastic new ship from Explorer Journeys and, and talk specifically about the culinary delights on board. So first of all, just give me a little bit of an overview of, of who you are and, and what you're doing currently for Explorer Journeys. Uh, who I am, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, actually, I'm going to celebrate 30 years at sea this month. Um, I have been uh, starting uh, Silver Sea in 1994 uh, from scratch, then uh, I start Oceania Cruises from scratch 
uh, being with Oceania uh, for 19 years, and um, so happy and so proud to uh, to be uh, to be in this uh, new project with uh, Aponte family. Um, so yeah, my uh, my experience uh, that uh, always uh, wanted to to stay as a chef, um, and uh, I have to say that all those years of experience helped me to really understand the luxury uh, business, the luxury need when it comes to the food. And if I join this uh, beautiful company, is because uh, the family give me a carte blanche to uh, develop the best food at sea. Okay. Fantastic. So just a little bit of experience there, Frank. You started the culinary delights of Silver Sea, then you did the same for Oceania, and now you're going on to explore a journey. So this must be, you know, such a, a fantastic project to, to work on. So let's just talk a little bit about the culinary experiences uh, on board this, this marvellous ship, because, you know, th there's some fantastic restaurants here. We're sat in anthology, you know, so perhaps we start off there. You know, what's anthology all about? Anthology was, um, is, was the, the idea is to give uh, this uh, beautiful uh, 40 seats restaurant to um, talented chef. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're not looking uh, specially to have a two or three mission star chef, but we want uh, people that carry the same vision of food than what we have, which means focusing on top quality of product and to service, I will not say in a simple way because it will be very uh, reductive to, to talk about a uh, simple way, but let's say that when the plate comes, you understand what is on the plate. Uh, and uh, that uh, we really uh, promoting uh, talented chef uh, with the same vision that what uh, we have. So we start with uh, Mauro Uliassi uh, from Italy. Now we have Emma Bengtsson, which is the, the first two mission star chef in the US. Um, and a little bit more uh, Swedish way of cooking, which I really love it. Uh, so yeah, the idea of ontology is to, uh, to develop the menu. I develop the menu with the chef that comes uh, because I can tell them, okay, don't do that. Don't serve this. Uh, I will do it this way. So I guide them so that we, we guarantee success of uh, this restaurant. Okay. And it it's, we, we were fortunate to, to night, dine in there a few few nights ago, and I have to say, Frank, it's, it's the best meal I've ever had at sea, and the dessert that we had was the best dessert I've ever tasted. <laughs> it was absolutely phenomenal and, and certainly worth the, the additional cover charge. But let, let's just also have a, a conversation about the Emporium Marketplace, because I think for some people we're going from one end of the spectrum to the other end. Um, you know, which is, you know, more of a, uh, a marketplace, isn't it? You know, where you can get all different kinds of food. It's very much of a, a, a casual atmosphere, but again, absolutely phenomenal. The, the type and quality of food that you're serving in there. How do you, how do you make that possible? That was my biggest headache because um, the funny thing when I, I came for the first time on the ship, I, I walk around all the, the buffet line I don't call it buffet, but it was a buffet line, and it's 65 meters. Mm -hmm. On 65 meters of food line uh, on, the, on, on, on such a small ship, it's huge. Uh, huge because you have to fill it up. When you go to uh, any food market, you see, if you have empty space, it doesn't look good. Uh, and to be able to really uh, fill it up ev uh, everywhere, it it's really, uh, uh, was really very challenging. What I really like in this concept is that we didn't build any uh, galley. We just have a, a very small galley on the back for reheating, but all the cooks are there. Yeah. So the cooks, when you go for your breakfast, they, 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 they're shopping for lunch. They, they're preparing cooking for, for dinner even. So they, they, they make the mise en place in the same time that they serve the guests. Uh, you can have your fresh pasta, fresh pasta that we make on board, the pizza. The pizza, we went, spent some time with, um, in Italy with Pepe and Grani to really understand the philosophy of pizza. We went then to uh, create our own mix of flour for pizza. Uh, because for me, as Mr. Paul Bocuse used to say, how difficult is to make, how, how difficult is to make simple. Mm -hmm. And it's true because uh, top quality of product, for us, I always say on the ship, and I'll tell this to, to, to my cooks, the star, there is no chef star here. 
the staff is the product. Yeah. And to have a fantastic food product, you need one, quality of product, two, quality of product, three, quality of product. Yes. And this is the, 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 the original, the meaning of what we want to do is the quality of the product. So whatever we have developed from the top quality of sushi we have to the pizza, to the fresh pasta, or to any of the concept that we have created, it's about the quality of the product. So in Emporium, what I wanted is that really, uh, now we just start the ceviche bar, for example, at lunch, that start just last cruise, is that you, you are everywhere and you have a ceviche, it's top quality of fresh uh, product. You have fantastic sushi with the, the rice come from a fo, uh, farm from Japan. Uh, the, the tuna come from Balfego in, uh, in Spain. Everything we have done, it's about product. Yeah, of course, it's a cost behind. And I can really tell you that we have the highest uh, food cost in the cruise industry, but you can see it. <laughs> so yeah, Emporium, we also have developed a lot of plant-based uh, different type yeah. of food. Uh, in Emporium, you can have your 100% uh, plant-based breakfast, which yes. is the most important uh, uh, meal where you fill up your energy in the morning. So you can have your acai bowl, your, your smoothies, your uh, juice, your uh, chai yogurt. Um, and everything we have developed there is to really it's not, uh, for me, it become another alternative for some. It's, it's a place that you must go. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we have really, uh, for me, it, it's a real success. And people love it. Oh, people, people, love people, it. people absolutely love it. And I, and I think, again, you know, something that you, you've mentioned, the quality of the ingredients of the pizza is phenomenal. The pasta is phenomenal, undoubtedly. But, you know, where else do you get soup? really, really fresh and delightful sushi uh, or the, the oysters that you serve. Um, you know, there's, there's just such a variety and, you know, diverse range of products in the uh, Emporium marketplace. It really is unbelievable what you've achieved there. And I think the other thing as well, that um, where possible, everything is cooked from scratch for the customer. So there's there's not a big pile of burgers on the side. I you know. know. If, if you want your, uh, you, you know, if you want. Last night I had um, lobster tail. I had um, I had some some big prawns, uh, some big uh, shrimp, um, and uh, some other seafood, and it was all there, cooked for me within a few minutes from absolute fresh, and that, that was an absolute delight. So, yeah, congratulations to, to what you've achieved in the Emporium Market. Thank you very much. Um, and let's let's move on to some of the other restaurants. Which is your favourite, Frank? Oh, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because it, it, it depends. Uh, it depends how you, you, you feel during your day. Uh, I love Sakura. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is very st strange because I'm not a sushi eater. Right. And I really start to eat sushi uh, on board because I love the quality of the sushi that we sell. Mm -hmm. uh, and in France, I think it's the worst place in the world to eat sushi. So um, um, I, I don't have this, uh, the, this, this habitude of, uh, of eating sushi. but. On board, uh, we developed, for example, on the, 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 the sushi program with Michael Panka, who is the, is the European champion of sushi and second in the, in the sushi uh, World Cup. And uh, he actually very strange because he comes from the same uh, city where I come from. Right. Uh, so we, we have developed this, this program and I, I, I was very clear. I said, okay, what do I need to have the best sushi? I don't want uh, to have a Nobu type of sushi. I don't want the pure Japanese type of sushi. I want to create our own image, our own vision of sushi. Uh, so we went to pick up this beautiful rice from a, a farm in, in Japan. We have the Balfego tuna uh, from Spain. Um, and, and we have created our own seasoning for the rice because the most important thing. Uh, and we, we really did uh, the maximum we could into this, this sushi uh, corner. So the sushi area in Sakura is, is really the highlight. Mm -hmm. And beside this, we have uh, created uh, um, the food around uh, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, crispy, spicy, color, yeah. uh, something that uh, if it's perfect for dinner, if it's perfect for lunch, and, uh, and I will say, yeah, maybe it's my favorite because it's, uh, it's not my everyday uh, yeah. type of food. So when I come on board, I like to go yeah. uh, to Sakura and people love it. But they, 
when I talk to guests, there is nobody tell me, uh, oh, they, oh, they tell me, oh, Sakura is my favorite. Uh, then you go to another table and say, oh, no, Phil Rouge is really the best French food I've ever had. Uh, oh, no, marble, marble, the quality of the food you serve in marble is crazy. So I'm very happy because I don't have one restaurant better than really the other. It depends what is your uh, your yeah. way of eating and what you feel like eating. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that's a great way to, to sum it up, to be honest. And, and all the restaurants are are phenomenal. Um, and, you know, I've, I've cruised on a, a lot of luxury cruise lines and, you know, what you're achieving is, is superb. Um, so um, one of my final questions, Frank, is just th there's no main restaurant on board. Um, what, what's no. the thought behind, behind this? That was the, the family vision, which I uh, totally agree when they told me this. Um, Sometimes guests come on board here and they say, after a few days, they say, we don't feel like being on a cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have break a little bit some of the, 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 the rules of cruising. Uh, yeah, we don't have a grand eye room. Now, if you go in to Phil Rouge or Mediot, it's a bit bigger restaurant, uh, it's no booking, so we could consider this little bit as a, as a main dining room. Um, but uh, no, there is no main dining room, there is no menu rotation, there is a uh, first menu rotation. Is The family really wanted that we consider a lot uh, sustainability, yeah. which means we have reduced the portion size, mm -hmm. but we have increased the quality of the food and the quality of the, the product that we buy. Um, so we, uh, we 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 don't have a 14 days menu cycle. Mm -hmm. We have a menu that I review by 10 or 20 percent every six months, every year, mm -hmm. changing dish uh, and cleaning this, changing because of the season. We try also to 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 buy a, a lot outside. We try to uh, go back to the time in 1990s. Uh, and I remember very well when I was executive chef on, on Silver Sea, the power was on board. The chef on board was really designing the menu. He had a tram, but yeah. I was changing the menu regarding where I cruise, where I can, what I can find on, on the market. And this is something that I told the family, I want to uh, uh, give back the power to the people on board. Mm -hmm. I'm not controlling everything automatically from the office so that you can have really the experience. Uh, we went to St. John's two days ago. I bought two beautiful groupers, two beautiful red snappers that we served the, 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 the night in, in Emporium. I really want to go back to this way of cruising that uh, we had in 1990s, mm -hmm. uh, which we have lost. Mm -hmm. We have lost in the, 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 the last few years in the cruise industry because everything is controlled by, by the office and, yeah. uh, and, and uh, it does not allow you to, to, to spend money on the market. Yeah. Uh, and at the end, it's, it's not that complicated to do. It's a question of trust and training. No, and the, the quality of food is is fantastic. It, it really is, and and thanks for for explaining that. And I think my my final question, Frank, is, you know, you, you are doing things differently. You know, you you do have uh, one eye on sustainability, on flexibility, as you've mentioned, and and giving uh, autonomy to to the chefs on board. But also, um, I think you you're very very flexible in terms of people's specific requirements as well and dietary requirements you've mentioned about um, people who are, are vegan or vegetarian or have uh, dietary um, issues as well and you know I think how you've um, worked towards those um, has, has been phenomenal have, have you got any final comments when it comes to no, that side of things? Yeah, you know, the, the, the world we're living in, is, it's uh, very important uh, that we have this flexibility and that we, uh, we concern, uh, we're really concerned with uh, the, 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 the happiness of uh, every passenger on board. When you reach uh, this kind of level uh, of cruising, uh, every passenger has to be really taken as an individual. And, uh, and um, we, we have, uh, on, on this particular ship, we have uh, an executive chef, we also have a senior executive chef, sure. which is somebody that really uh, spend more time with the guests, listening to the guests. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever somebody has a has a problem or diet requirement, it's not just you put on a piece of paper. You meet directly with the chef. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm allergic to this, allergic to that. The chef is going to tell you, okay, when you go to this restaurant, you can have this, this, this. If there is anything you want us to cook, I knew we will do it. 
we're not promoting it. I mean, if you come on board, you say, oh, tonight I feel like I want to have a Dover Soul. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to serve you the Dover Soul. We have Dover Soul in this first time, we have Dover Soul in this one. But uh, you see, it, it, it's something that I really want people to understand that we give the best uh, 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 on the plate, we give the best of the knowledge that we have, but I don't want people to start to me, oh, I want this today, or oh, tomorrow I want to have this. No. no. Caviar. We don't serve paddle fish. We have caviar. Mm -hmm. Every restaurant carry caviar on the menu. But if you tell me, oh, I want two ounces of caviar tonight. No. You have caviar on the menu. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, we, we don't waste money. We put the money on the ingredients, but we don't want to become uh, a, a cruise line where you have a 50 special order at night. Yes. So we consider very much the special dietary, but we we, we are not uh, creating monster yeah. of uh, having uh, two uh, chefs only cooking for special order. Yeah. This has been something that for me uh, is not my way of, uh, of, 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 of cooking, to be honest. Now, you see, I, I just quickly want to talk about, for example, um, marble, marble steak. Uh, we wanted to create something different. Yes, the company has created uh, something a little bit on a European way of living. So we didn't want to have uh, only uh, black and goose on a different cut. We said, okay, let's, I will not say educate, but let's, uh, le let's our guests discover what is the Swami from Sweden, what is the Simmental from Germany, the Chianina from Italy, the Jerseyes from France. So to have all this kind of meat that we dry edge uh, before it comes on board, then we finish in dry edging uh, directly in a restaurant. But to be able to have guests that are going to come and say, wow, I heard about Simmental, but I never had a chance to try. Please go ahead. So it's also all this kind of, uh, of uh, way of cooking that uh, not really existing everywhere. So it's our own identity we want to, to show to, to our guests.